Hi everyone, welcome back. We are live from Awards Conference in Berlin, uh, all about web design, user experience, and uh, with an awesome lineup of speakers. And one of them would be with us for 55 minutes. Ta -da! Yay! Hi Tobias, or Toby, Hi. as you prefer. Yeah, Toby, Toby, Toby's I think fine, Toby yeah. works. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having Super me. Super excited. Me too. I uh, was very happy when you said, yeah, I can come. So, okay. Of course. That's awesome. Of course. And uh, the idea is really to engage. So we are live on Behance, on Behance.net slash live, and give the opportunity to the Behance community to uh, ask you questions, discover your work, and also yeah. your insights yeah. on uh, what's happening in the industry. Uh, what do we mean by experience design? Uh, you know, <laughs> in general, or deep questions. Or if already, you want to talk yeah. about coffee, I mean, yeah, yeah, I love coffee. There's, there is always yeah. a uh, a good topic for us. So make sure to ask questions. I see uh, Munir. Good to see you, Munir. Darbaz in the chat. I see uh, Miraz. Uh, we have Miraz, Miradze, maybe. Oh, he's from just Italy. here. Welcome, in. Or yeah. maybe someone just who knows Swedish. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Yeah. And, uh, Anouk also. Okay. Thanks for watching. Like Don't this. hesitate to ask questions. Uh, this is awesome. And uh, maybe I will let you introduce yourself. We can cover a lot of topics during this hour. We so can cover a lot of topics, yeah. We'll improvise a little bit. Also, if you have questions, maybe we can rebound and find new topics. But yeah. Yeah, I could do a quick intro. Yeah, please. Sure. Okay. So um, I'm currently working as the experience design director at Minecraft. Okay. Which means. Um, so the, the video game. The video game. Yeah. Um, hopefully, some people have played it. Uh, we've divided the experience sort of into two parts. Okay. One is about um, having fun. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that's game design, uh, typically. And then as soon as you're frustrated, uh, that's my fault. And then that's experience design. So it's, uh, experience oh. for us basically means traditional digital product design, uh, but applied to a game. Uh, and the, the title product design is taken because products within games, or at least at Mojang, means physical products, okay. like yeah. toys and yeah. such. So therefore, experience. So it's not as mystic or mystical as it <laughs> sounds like, I think. Uh, so this is my current position. We can talk more about that later. But to mm -hmm. rewind a bit, my background is, is very much within pixel perfect design. That's where I started. Okay. Really holding that close to my heart. So which tools were you using for pixel oh, perfect? Oh, you way back. I, that was a lot of Flash and a lot of Adobe. Yeah. Uh, Photoshop, I mean. Oh, Flash. Um, with, uh, so you used some uh, pixel perfect fonts? The uh, faces yes, that would yes very yeah. much so. Yeah. And too advanced, that web site was oh, very, very oh, yeah. oh, so was pretty. The, the Bible. The, the animations, Bible yeah. Um, and then I went to Hyper Island in Stockholm. Okay. So then I got more into your design. I work with your design at Spotify. And I sort of tumbled in there and accidentally um, was made responsible for the UI design for all of our products. Oh. Because it was a small company. Including the mobile experience or all screens. Yes, exactly. All like screens. A, a yeah. good example there where you have a desktop, like uh, a desktop yeah. clients, you have the web. Tab iPad just came wow. after that. So it's, it's a long time ago. Uh, so that just had came out. Retina screens was a new thing. They were just popping out at that yeah. time. Uh, we had some TV too, TV UIs too, especially yeah. like, not, not our own, but with partners. Um, and it was really by accident because uh, Rasmus Andersson, a really talented uh, designer is now at Figma oh. uh, in San Francisco. Um, he was doing everything and he quit the first week. So accidentally oh. I started doing everything. So you were like in charge? I was by accident in terms of oh, the UI design. Uh, That's a good chance. Yeah. I love Spotify. I'm a big fan from That's the good. very first day. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I really respect uh, what you did. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, and, uh, so how was, was how was structured the team? You know, like when you have multiple experiences like this. Yeah. Uh, do you need to have like uh, one team per experience or you have a global team and just working on all the outputs? With Spotify specifically yeah. or, yeah. Um, so at, at the time, um, we were such a small team, so we actually just oh, okay. moved engineers. So the iPhone engineers would move to desktop, we would work together, oh, okay. and yeah. then they would move back. So it was, I mean, not ideal, but that, that's how it worked. It was very pragmatic at that point. So this was before we entered the US. Uh, we were just oh. like trying the product out really in Scandinavia and some European countries. Um, so I'd say a pragmatic culture without any agile coaches and, and stuff like this. But um, now it's so different. It's, it's, yeah. it's impossible to compare. Oh, OK. So when was it, Spotify? This was uh, 2010. Oh, yeah. So already yeah. at, the, at the beginning. Somewhat, yeah. At the origin. Yeah, and before moving to the US. So yeah, I remember this time. When, when you moved to France, I was like, yeah. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. 
Okay, so yes, so Spotify. Yeah. And, so, uh, that, so that's my design background. But then I've okay. been I've been more and more sort of leaning in toward, towards development and tech. Oh, okay. So actually, um, I bought a book, learned Objective C, uh, oh. and then built an iPhone app, and released it. It went well. And then I moved to GitHub. So then oh, I did development awesome. and front end development and design at GitHub for a while with some really talented people. I, I, lo I love them all, I love you all. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful company. And then I was in San Francisco for a while. Oh, cool. Awesome. Um, GitHub and now, and right and after my, uh, GitHub you... I actually went into a used research company called Lookback, okay. which, which are also based in San Francisco and Stockholm. And then I went into teaching. So I've been, oh. I love quitting companies. Uh, <laughs> I, sh I shouldn't say that to my current employer, but uh, it's, it's really fun. It's a good way to learn new things and meet new people. Uh, so after that, I took I took a break and I I did a lot of teaching. So I was a lot at Hyper Island. I'm still mm. at Hyper Island, and uh, now I'm sort of back trying to at Minecraft then combine both my sort of tech skills and my design skills. Okay, that's so that's the current focus. That's awesome. So yeah, we have someone in the chat saying, okay, we can assume that Tobias has one of the most interesting work he's done <laughs> so far. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I see someone also Daniel saying, okay, can I speak in French and you can translate? Yeah. So Daniel, if you you're lucky because if you write a question in French, I will be able to, to translate. So that's uh, that's fine. And hi, Amy from Hungary. Thanks for joining. That's uh, that's cool. Okay. So you have a lot of presentations. Uh, do we want to pick a topic and we can try to talk about someone, something, uh, something? Yeah. Uh, oh, there's so much to talk about. Um, we could talk about if you want to show also a personal project or you know. Sure. Well, we can we can dig into that real quick, okay. uh, just because it's I think fun for me to focus on that too. Because I I in my day to day job I don't focus a lot on design, right? Crafting things yeah. anymore. It's like this thing of being um, promoted to your incompetence. <laughs> Have you heard of this expression? Um, so I'm pretty much not working with this anymore, which <laughs> means I love hybrid projects. Uh, so I can I can show off a hybrid project real okay. quick that so I yeah, recently. If we switch to uh, to be screen, here we go. Nice. So th that's so a personal project. So uh, this is a personal project. Did you do everything like design? Uh, this is everything. Web design. Yes. Everything. Okay. Uh, is it on screen? Yeah. Yeah. You okay. Perfect. So, so the feedback is here. If you ah, I see right there. Okay. Check. Beautiful. So this is just um, open source uh, directory of uh, text animation. So this is a Jekyll project for those of you um, who are Jekyll fans or not. I love it. I recommend it. It's really it's a static site generator. Oh, um, yeah. so you can do uh, beautiful things with this. I'm using anime.js here to animate things. So it's just a directory of of like different animations that you could use for different things. And if you click one, you just get Whoa. the code for that. Oh, and you can uh, use it on your own website. Yes. So that's the idea. You should just that's be able to nice. copy paste all of this. For sharing that. Yeah, that's and paste nice. it into your project. And before I forget, uh, someone was asking if you can cover at some point. Oh, it was Mikael. Like, like in your uh, process, how do you manage analytics? What manage what? Uh, analytics. So let's say you release an app and ah, oh, this is a this is a great topic, yeah, it's but a great it's topic. so big. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how do you? I guess the question behind is, can you monitor the the behavior of the users mm -hmm. and identify that something is wrong mm -hmm. to fix it after? Like, it would be like real time user testing in a way. Yeah. Uh, it's and I know it's a big topic. So on websites, it's quite easy to cover it, but with mobile apps, for instance, I don't know if sure. You know. Um, yeah, this is a deep one. So if we talk about, there, there are always also like different paradigms, paradigms really, or like okay. belief systems that we as companies believe in. Uh, and Spotify is is completely data driven. Oh, okay. Uh, they are very inspired by Netflix, and and partly because the um, the VP of design at Spotify, Rochelle King, she comes from Netflix. She she. Uh, built that a, a big part of the company for several years. Oh, and now okay. she's at Spotify. And so there they measure everything. They don't ship something without proving that it's better. By data basically, before. with wow. data. So yes. they do A B testing. They do a lot of A B testing mm -hmm. and they and I think there are like several layers to the to the data driven process. I think at, at the most fundamental level uh, or rudimental level, you you, you don't use data. You like have a gut feeling. Like that's that's the lowest I point, agree. right? Yeah. And then you start looking at data and you base your guesses on data. But uh, as in you you're informed by data, but you don't really measure. Then comes A/B testing, right? Then you actually have like, okay, we looked at the data, we have an idea, and we produce something and we measure. Uh, Spotify tries to like go 
one level or two levels above that. Okay. Which I think is really exciting. So one, they always work with um, hypothesis-driven design, okay. or try to. Mm -hmm. So it, before you run an A-B test, you have to define the hypothesis, exactly what do you think you'll move by introducing this design, what metrics do you think will okay. move, and, you want and to measure why, that. And, and want to measure that. The impact, okay. And the cool thing about that is I think that you move the focus from uh, only results <laughs> yeah. to learning. Okay. As in, as soon as you do that, it's fine to fail because it's like, okay, we had an hypothesis. Yeah. The hypothesis was wrong, which means we can create a new hypothesis, but it wasn't a failure because we gain an insight about the hypothesis at least. So even though you failed to move metrics, you've, you've succeeded in like learning something in the company. Um, and that, that just makes it so easier to work, I think, personally. I, lo I love that process. Now, to contrast that real quick to Minecraft, <laughs> Minecraft. It's a lot of gut feeling. Ah, it's a lot of gut feeling, which I know I have mixed feelings about it. Um, <laughs> it's uh, I, I tend to appreciate it more and more. Okay. You mean, I mean, if you look at Minecraft, it's this game created by a, a small group of people yeah. with tons of community feedback. No, like not a lot at least of like hardcore analytics or data mm -hmm. science okay. behind it, just like reacting to the community. And then they did that and I think they managed the community um, like um, conversation really well over several years, always being on Reddit and Twitter and like asking for input in key decisions. And then if people didn't dislike something, they, they it happened that they changed their mind quickly too. Oh, okay. And so, but it's like more, yeah, it's more like subjective, more about uh, yeah, feedback and uh, yeah. trying to understand the mood, what's happening in the community. And then they build, so it's the second most, um, I think, sold game after Tetris of all time. Wow. And so, so a lot so of users. A lot of users. I mean, a lot of success. So, I mean, you have this success <laughs> and it's difficult to say, like, I yeah. don't like that process. You have Spotify, which is super successful being That's data driven. That's successful, yeah. And uh, with gut feelings, you can be successful with Minecraft. Yeah. So, yeah. But thanks for the feedback. I mean, it's great. I hope it answers your question, but uh, I feel that, yeah. And, but if you can have analytics, and I think the most important part is, yeah, what is your culture? How can you make it part of your decision workflow? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to be data driven, or, I mean, yeah, both work. And uh, I guess it's also, yeah, part of the culture of your community, so of the competition, yeah. the market. Yeah. So. That's I cool. think the core part of, of both of the, what they have in common, really, <laughs> is to be humble. Okay. Oh, yeah. I've seen that, that like yeah. of your own ignorance. Like, yeah. we might not know the best answer. We'll try something. Interesting. In Spotify's oh, yeah. case, they get feedback from the data. Yeah. And in, in Minecraft's Minecraft case, they get feedback the, from the community. From the community. Okay. But yeah, it's, it's about being humble, I think. Awesome. Cool. Okay, so let's go back to uh, moving letters. Okay, yeah, sure. So, uh, so, uh, so these are just uh, CSS transitions? They are all um, actually a oh, JavaScript driven. Yeah. Uh, yeah, AnimateJS, uh, beautiful framework. Um, I wanted to name the creator, but I, but I can't remember. It's, it's a great framework, though. AnimateJS, uh, you can Google it. There's tons of great tutorials and examples. Now, the, the idea behind this, too, I think is really, we, we build so many frameworks and overcomplicate things. <laughs> I think that's a sudden reaction when, no, it's not animate, it's, it's anime. An anime, right? As in oh, the, okay. um, the, um, like the manga. Yes, exactly. AnimateJS. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, we can switch to my mm. screen. Look at this beauty. Choo, 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 choo. Okay, if you display my screen, I will Julian show you again. Julian Garnier, yeah, it's French. Oh, I Julian, think. no. Okay, let's load it again. I will tell you why he cannot be French. <laughs> Whoa. And it's open source, it's yes, free? Yes, it's oh, open awesome. source. So Julian, he would be French, it would be an E here. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. but Garnier is very French. Right? Garnier is French. So some percentage of French. Yeah. Maybe there. he's from Quebec. Somehow. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, wow. Even this, it looks yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's so Look at how It's beautiful. And I use this framework uh, specifically because yeah. of I really like the just timeline syntax. It was okay. really easy to you manage. You can switch back to Toby. But yeah, thanks mm. for sharing that. It's awesome. Um, I mean. So we could actually look into real quick mm -hmm. just how easy it is to create some of these animations. I mean, so this is all of the code. Um, here to the right, and we can skip the HTML and CSS, that's not that interesting. So this entire animation is just um, delay function running on each letter. So we're doing um, a bouncing okay. by animating the, on, on the y-axis yeah. from like um, minus to zero. Okay. 
here. And then we run that on every single letter, and then we just increase the delay for every single letter. I see. Um, and, and so I use it for, because really I love the syntax and the, and the timeline <laughs> syntax here. And have you ever worked with uh, After Effects, like doing a motion design? Some. Some. It's, uh, it's more like, fla like something we would do in Flash with action sure. script. Yeah. yeah. I recognize the. Uh, um. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, so that's yeah. a personal project. That's a personal uh, project. How, how do you, is it important for you? Like, how do you balance like, your work and personal project? Is yeah. it more to explore something new or? It's absolutely to learn and explore things. Okay. Um, it's so easy to, as you have, or it feels like I've tumbled into management positions that you, you um, get out of touch with the community and the latest tools. And it's just yeah. so difficult to keep up when you're not doing things on a daily basis. So it's, it's like, shit, I need to learn something new. And then and I sit you, every single night yeah, you change on my yourself. free time. Yeah, and I try to learn something. Uh, Esham is asking you, can I, can I please uh, use that for my project? Yes, yeah. please. That's, That's the, the point. point. Yeah. That's the point. Please do. Um, so yeah, copy and paste, steal whatever you want, change it however you want. Um, there's also another project uh, called Spinkit, uh, which has the same sort of um, oh yeah, Maybe you can it. show us Spinkit. Yay. Here we go. Spinkit. It's, it's also by uh, something you did? Is it something I did. This is oh. much easier to use, actually, because it's just HTML and CSS. There's no JavaScript. So you can okay. just copy and paste this Ooh. and put it into a website. And so it's just a bunch of different spinners. Um, oh, like um, when you load a page yeah. or, yeah. And it's, it's <laughs> spinning. It's, <that's> a, weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird project uh, of mine because they, they, they've started showing up at places. And as soon as I see them, it's when something is not working. Which is not a good way to brand yourself. <laughs> it's like I I made that thing <laughs> that you see when your app isn't working. It's like the um, yeah, like the like the museum in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so exactly. Cool. We're talking yeah. about this about this uh, yeah. this ship that directly yeah synced. Yeah, yeah, sank, yeah. The Vasa or Vasava? Exactly. Vasa it's Vasa Vasa the Vasa Museum. Vasa Museum. If you're in Stockholm, please go there. It's fascinating, but it's <laughs> like it's our Titanic. <laughs> and really what we're doing is we're we're showing our incompetence in engineering <laughs> as our <laughs> one of the biggest <laughs> tourist attractions. So I guess yeah, this is in the spirit of that. Uh, as soon as someone good. wants to show their incompetence in engineering, to, yeah, exactly. To the Vasa. That's good. Yeah. Um, Okay, I love your progress. Does the Microsoft use this animation pattern? I'm uh, not sure if, if, if it's spin kit. Um, maybe on the website possibly, they, they use yeah. some stuff, yeah. They have amazing websites. Because Microsoft acquired Minecraft, so I guess they, they, did. they, they started us. making yeah. the connection there. Yeah. All right, thanks for sharing the link to the Vasa Thank Museum. You, <laughs> it's a tribute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so again, and they can, uh, for free, they can copy, paste yes, the code is, and use them the on their website. Too, yeah. yeah, This is great. Yeah, um, this is awesome. And I like doing these sort of projects too because, as, as I was about to say, I think we overcomplicate things a lot of times, and we think that to share something, we need to create like a new framework, a right. new way of doing things, a really long tutorial. But often, I think we just need like code that works, yeah. and we want to copy paste it as soon as possible, and then we learn by doing that. So that's really the vision behind these. I'm working on more. If if the community has any wishes too of what I should do next, I'd love to hear that too. Mm -hmm. I'm I have a few products in mind that I'm working on, but um, I love this, and it's a good way, actually. And Matthews is asking you, should I credit you uh, if I use it? Uh, you don't have to. Okay. Uh, you, Always nice. I, I mean, yeah, it's like if if you want to, I'm I'm s I, I really appreciate it. But credit is is I mean, we use so much technology from each other. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, but actually, this is a tip that I give to most students when I lecture. Like, how, what's the best way to a, a, apply to a job? Oh. And um, if there's one thing that I think you should do, rather than spending a lot of time on a cover letter or something like that, build something like this, a project that you think that your employers will want to use. Hmm. And it immediately shows them that you understand their problems and what they're working with, and they they understand the code, they understand your thought process, and and especially if it becomes popular, it could be a freebie. If you're if you're a yeah. designer, it could be like uh, some sort of oh, iPhone sketch or template, whatever. Yeah. Um, but especially if it becomes popular, you'll have such an easy time getting to an interview because they'll be like, oh, it's this thing that I saw on the internet the other day. Maybe you didn't even use it, <laughs> but it's, it's a good in, hmm. especially if you don't have a lot of contacts. At least you can use that as a way to get your foot oh, in. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So can, can we see uh, some of them? 
Oh, the spinnings? Oh, the spinners? Sure. But that's, uh, uh, yeah, okay. so this is the most popular one. This is being cube. It sort of looks like Microsoft. Maybe that's what he was referring uh, yeah, to. Maybe yeah, it looks like the Microsoft logo. Yeah, good point. Spinning. Yeah, we're waiting for Microsoft. This one, uh, yeah, that's the yeah. This one is pretty popular to use behind Maybe a logo. Zen. It's easy to just stick oh. a logo on top of it, and then it's pulsating. Oh, okay, like um, a pulse. Okay, I see. And then, yeah, this is a standard one. I think they get more and more non-standard as we go. <laughs> um, right, this oh, is one pulse. I was thinking about, actually. Yeah. yeah, it's very easy to use with a logo. Yeah, it looks uh, right. Somewhere. Ooh. Mm, that's pretty. 3D illusion. And the, the code is so simple here. Now it's, it's a, there's a lot of like WebKit stuff going on. But it's this is the entire animation that's running on each um, hmm. uh, circle, so it's just scaling it. Oh yeah, just um, scaling. And how how is it following your path? It's it's rotating. So there are two circles, oh, and they rotate the with the rotation. container, and then they scale back in and out. That's smart. And then it creates this weird. This yeah. is a common one too. Very pure, very yeah. nice. Yeah. This one too, very good. Yeah. Oh no, this one. This is interesting. So this <laughs> is not supposed to look like this. But oh. the animation, if you look at the code, it's actually not... Uh, they, there are delays here for the different blocks. <laughs> so it's supposed to... Yeah, but if but you, if you, you, if you use time. Chrome, it works. If you use WebKit, <laughs> they, uh, they're not that There's no delay. Um, strict about their delay. <laughs> it's, it's a very, very short delay. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like uh, <laughs> one millisecond. Well, if the WebKit team is looking, please fix this. Yeah, this has work. been broken for, for years, but yeah. Uh, if you reload and, and you're lucky, it just works now. See, it works. Oh, okay. So it's it's um, it's more interesting yeah. this way. Yeah. But that's it, from what I've been able to tell. It's it's actually just a rendering bug in in WebKit. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. It's the following one. This is also pretty easy. It's just one or four blocks, all with the same animation, but cool. they are tilted 45 degrees. <laughs> um, yeah. So all of these are free. Please use them. Uh, but yeah, it's really just a way for me to um, try to keep up to date. Yeah, that's a nice giveaway for the community. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Talking about giveaway, so uh, in about uh, seven, ten minutes, we will give away uh, some uh, XD socks for the winter. Hmm. So socks, branding with XD, and also some uh, notebooks. So. Uh, very good uh, goodies, actually, to someone in the chat. So if you're watching, make sure to be on behance.net slash live, sign in and say something, where you are from, ask a question, and uh, we will randomly pick someone and announce the winner in about yeah, less than 10 minutes. Okay? Cool. Sucks. Um, what else? Something in your presentations maybe uh, we could cover? Okay, yeah, maybe we could about talk about the something. Psychology. We could... <laughs> okay, so we could... Um, what about some alternatives? Then we could talk about one of them. We could talk about education and creativity. Okay. I'm really excited about that. We could talk about education and critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Or we could talk about um, how I think little we know of what process is the best at a company. <laughs> oh, like the, the culture? And yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. So, okay. So, actually, they will choose. Okay, so that's cool. They, they're okay. just talking about socks, though. Yeah, socks are <laughs> coming. Don't worry. Uh, Everyone will okay. love some socks. So we have socks, three, please. Three potential topics. Use your experience socks. Uh, they, yeah, they want the socks. <laughs> yeah. You will get a chance. But now you need to choose. So the first topic is uh, how Education to educate. Education and creativity. creativity. Education and one, critical yeah. thinking. Creative thinking. So do you want yeah, creativity? Critical thinking. thinking or, or process sounds good. We have one vote for process from Andrew on the Collins. Process. Okay. So let uh, us know now in the chat. Coming, there is a 30 second delay. Okay, ah, so they, okay. they will start uh, sharing their thoughts. So educating, creativity, critical. Uh, and then, process, yeah, and critical thinking. And then thinking. Uh, specifically, I think with. Um, okay, a lot of process, I see. Process, process. Process is good, education, thinking. Okay, it's between critical thinking and process. Okay. So I mean, they sort of touch on, yeah. like, on each other. So we could, we could start okay, there. Okay, so I, I let you. Um, okay, let's you try to, to find something then mm -hmm. on critical thinking. Um, well, I started, I started uh, we can actually start with the companies and then sort of go into okay. how that connects to uh, this. So. I got a tweet, I don't have it here, but I got a tweet some time ago from a designer at RDO. I'm not sure if you remember that service. It's a music streaming service um, okay. founded by the Skype founder, Niklas oh. Sandström. Yeah. 
and it was beautiful. It was, I think, only available in the U.S. Okay. RDOS and is radio, but missing the A. Yeah. Beautiful design. Uh, I really admired the design team while I was at Spotify. Oh. And it felt like they are like more Apple-esque. They are going to run past us and grow and, and become the successful ones. And then they, they didn't. They failed, actually. Hmm. And now Spotify is the leading actor. And I tweeted after being at Spotify where we had a lot of ideas about what the best way to work is. And then I ended up at GitHub where we had basically... Not a lot of process at okay. all. <laughs> uh, I would wake up and I would have no meetings, no managers, no well, milestones, nothing. Well, I would be in Stockholm and the entire team was completely distributed. Well, um, I think this is, this is getting normal. I, it's not that weird. But for, for a sort of big company, around 240, it was somewhat weird. But it worked really well. Okay. And, and then I was very confused when I was there about like what was even true. At Spotify, we had all these <laughs> methods and processes and internal talks and coaching about agile, being agile, yeah. uh, which is um, can be such a buzzword, but doesn't have to be, uh, I think. And then we had none of that at, at GitHub. <laughs> and if you go to, one, one, so one thing, just as a concrete example here, if you go yep. to pages.github.com yeah, and we load back. that uh, website, this is a site um, that promotes a feature on GitHub that you might not know about, uh, mm -hmm. but a lot of people use it to blog. And it's, um, it's basically a repository that you have on GitHub. Yeah. And as soon as you push to master, yeah. it publishes that as a website. Oh. So like you, you deploy by, by just merging to master, mm -hmm. and it's available then for all GitHub users under like your username.github.io. Mm, yeah. So it's free hosting, but it's supposed to be used for like mo mostly open source project, and it works with uh, with Jekyll. Now this site di you didn't use to look like this. It was a disaster. No one ha had, <laughs> sorry, no one had worked with it for for years. Uh, but the service was popular. Okay. So just to give you an idea of how this like design came to be. Um, internally at GitHub, you could find whatever you wanted by searching on things internally at GitHub. I found it. I pinged people. Does no one care? Does anyone care about this project? Got didn't get a reply. Ping the just team. Come it, in. Yeah, yeah. approve it and just like yeah. give some feedback and add some uh, backend help in here. Oh. And then I wake up the next morning and someone did. <laughs> and then we shipped it. <laughs> so so it took it took about two weeks. And then we added some polish and then we iterated. Sure, but all of this the like from concept and just finding the project to shipping took about two weeks. Wow. And so. When I saw things like that happening, where like teams self-forming and mm. then just also disappearing again into their own sort of voids, without any management, without any like yeah. big planning and vision, milestone meetings, yeah, no, just work. Just someone um, saying, yeah, I have something ready, I need some help here, and without getting like real-time feedback, you yeah. just uh, yeah wake up the next morning and, and something is it's ready. done. Yeah. Wow. And so, so that really made me question, like, what, what her processes are actually good and in what circumstances. Interesting. And, and I thought this, would, this process would work in a small company, like 12 people, yeah. but I didn't imagine it working in, like, a 240-people company. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's when I tweeted, I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to process anymore. <laughs> and a designer at the audio team oh. said, me neither. Like, did, did we succeed oh. because we had a good process oh. or did we fail because they have no we didn't, right? they didn't know either? Yeah. So that I thought was funny. It's like the, someone uh, who was at Spotify f uh, succeeded, didn't know why. Someone who was at RDO failed, didn't know why. I had no idea. Yeah. Huh. So that was one of those moments where I started just being very, very critical of, of, of the, the, the internal truths sort of that we okay. live by. Um, and it, it really comes down to like correlation versus uh, causation. I think we can switch back away from my screen for a while yeah so you will search for uh, yeah i'm gonna look for uh, right side and yeah something. so we are about to give away the xd socks to someone this is coming so be active in the chat say hi i see people from lyon where actually there is also a conference today about ux design lyon in france bonjour henri and uh Hanor, you want stickers now we have sucks today but maybe if you win we can add some stickers we will see we have some xd stickers too actually hi remit hi samuel thanks for watching okay hi from switzerland hey, i am 25 percent swiss oh hello switzerland. from which part of uh, switzerland um lucerne 
Oh, look, then the French mm, part. Yes. Awesome. And Berlin is in the house. Okay, Bjorn. We are live from Berlin. If you just join us, yeah, we are in Berlin right now. Live from rewards. Okay, did you uh, find something to I found say? something. I could, we could, we, yeah. could, we could talk about this. Oh, uh, mm. that's my favorite feature. Yeah, right? It's fun. so good. So this sort of ties into not knowing actually what's, what's important or not. We <laughs> talked about process. Now this is the topic of questioning. This could be a sensitive po uh, pr um, subject. If design is important. Okay. Uh, we're at a design conference. That I hate to be the party pooper. Undo. No, so uh, let me explain why. So I think we, we gain a lot of ignorance uh, by accident from our expertises that okay. we live in. Mm -hmm. So Discover Weekly, I think, is, is a really good feature. I love it. I'm, I hope the listeners love it too. It's, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is basically what it looks like. You just get a playlist and it updates every Monday. Yeah. With, with great music. With um, great music that is not something that you have heard before. Yeah. Like, uh, supposed to, yeah. Yeah, uh, exactly. Just to make discover you discover new, new bands, new music. And, but it's based on... It's based on your past listening. Yeah. And, and not only like, um, oh, your friend who listened to this also listened to this other thing, so okay. they're fusioning to it. It's also actually analyzing the music. Yeah, the type of music that you... The like beats and, and the, yeah. like the, the, the actual mood. sound too, yeah, and the wow. mood. So, um, and it's clever. It's, it just um, takes everything away every Monday and gives you some new stuff. Uh, design is most important. No, they are very uh, <laughs> curious to say, oh my God, he starts with his design. Yes, no, exactly. they're like we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. So <laughs> this is the thing. I, l I love this feature. It's beautiful and it works so well. And especially if you think about how it's like shaping your behavior. Yeah. From that point of view, I think it, it makes great use of loss aversion in a, in a positive way. Okay. As in, as, as loss aversion is um, shortly explained, people's tendency to prefer avoiding losses to acquiring equivalent gains. Right. So if 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 I ask you to do some work to gain five dollars, mm -hmm. it's likely that you say no. It could be likely that you okay. say no. But if I first give you five dollars and then ask you to work to not lose them. You'll work harder to not lose the yeah, five. You want to keep right? the five dollars. Yeah. Okay. And so I think Discover Weekly uses this in a <laughs> clever way. It gives you music first instead of saying, "Please come and find music." So just I think it's just a clever mechanism. Interesting. And you also establish a habit. So yeah. every single Monday. Every Monday it's a rendezvous. Yeah. yeah. So you can wake up and like this is my de um, design. Oh, sorry. This is my uh, Discover Weekly day. This is the problem. I wish I came up with this feature, but I didn't. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's the kicker. And no. That's the end. So, Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So I think it comes back to this expression. Okay. Uh, if Olga have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So, as in, if you're feeling bad, if a Sushen believes there's an issue with your body, a psychiatrist with your head, a personal <laughs> trainer with your exercise, and a life coach with your motivation. <laughs> and I think as designers, I mean, I've, I'll never say design is not important, but I, I'll say that as designers, we tend to assume that design is the most important thing in a project. And we have a winner for oh, the sucks. XD Sucks. Maybe you want to read the name? Sure, Lara Barker. Yeah, congratulations, congratulations Lara. Lara. You will receive a private message on behalf. We we'll exchange some information and receive XD socks, notebooks, maybe stickers, we'll see. <laughs> but Lara, let us know where you're from. And for all the other ones, stay tuned because we'll do more giveaways during all the shows. We're still live for three or four hours uh, from Berlin. So yeah, just stay tuned. But you really wanted the socks. I mean, that's uh, it's very cold. Yeah, it's, it's so winter. cold. It's, it's winter. extremely cold. Yeah, I need, need some more need socks. socks. I love some socks, actually. Socks. Where are my socks? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, GG Lara. Yeah, GG Lara. Yes. GG. Congrats, Lara. Okay, so if we jump back to it, I think we tend to just be sort of biased against assuming that the, the design is the solution. Because we are designers. So, yes. So I think in this case, I was blinded by my expertise because I got this exact assignment for so many years. Okay. Please recommend music to someone. Right? I, I had that as a problem definition internally. And every time I got that problem definition, I said, no problem, let me fix it. I'll sit down and I'll paint some pictures. <laughs> Right? I that's, design as a designer, Let right? That's what it. I do. I, I create yeah. a really clever layout. Yeah, the lay a header here, a few icons. Exactly. Okay, that's fixed. Where do we start? We start with adding design. Hmm. So, and I think this is the clever thing about Discover Weekly. It's not something, in the end, actually, a visual designer or UI. designer or UX designer didn't come up with this feature. It was a programmer. 
Wow. Because the programmer was limited by his or her limitations yeah. and couldn't come up with a design, so just used a playlist. And it turns out it was one of the most, I think, cleverest thing to do it's, because it's a known it's concept amazing. within Spotify, right? It's, it's brilliant. So you just have a so regular playlist. So the developer playlist. said, uh, okay, I have access to this information. I actually, I can extract like some, uh, some rules to yeah. build a custom playlist. Yeah. And, uh, and in a typical and project, you, you'd expose it in a new view with design and like yeah, long design it. sprints. <laughs> And then instead, because I think it was a hype project and, and no time was given for any designers to help out, oh. then I, was, I wasn't here uh, or wasn't on Spotify when this was created. Okay. So I, the details might be somewhat wrong, but basically this is it. And, and I'm like, this is one of the failures that I look back at and think, I always assumed design would be the solution, like by accident. Hmm. And now I try to... Uh, when I'm working with design at Minecraft, question if that's going to be the driver okay. behind a project. So what type of other drivers uh, could you consider? Like I you think have some examples. Yes. So I it think could be a, yeah, coding or like a... The code quality could be yeah. a driver. Uh, performance is, performance I think is a very predictable driver. Okay. As in you will always see that performing gains produces something. It's not, it's not a risky bet. It's like if uh, we make yeah. the, the app perform better, people are going to notice and probably will increase retention okay. because we have less friction. So people are going to stick around, but you can quickly uh, reach like a local maxima. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a predictable yeah, and non, reach, non risky uh, thing to a certain point. 60 FPS, you're at 60 FPS. Yeah. So, and yeah. then you're like, what? Yeah. yeah. So, um, but that, that, that's, uh, I think an underappreciated driver too, mm -hmm. uh, especially at many companies where you're so focused on shipping new features, you forget that performance in itself oh, is yeah, just, yeah. it's so important. Well, it was the, like when we started to build, uh, Adobe XD, you yeah. know, experience design. So that's a new tool, uh, to build, uh, uh, to design and share prototypes. Uh, and it's a brand new architecture and platform for Adobe. So we started from scratch, like mm -hmm. from a blank page, but from day one, the priority was performance. on the performance because the goal was to be able to open I don't know like 5,000 screens yeah. without impacting the performance Beautiful. so but but that was a huge bet yeah and it impacted everything so even the pace on how you can release features uh, but I think it's a good bet as you said yeah. and now XD is recognized for the performance like if you compare it with the other tools in the market they say oh yeah that's fast yeah. it works it's responsive that's the first thing that the users have in yeah. mind so well it done. was a good bet. Well done, it yeah. was a good bet. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's yeah, that's a good driver. And then Apple. Well, okay. I <laughs> yeah, just read the <laughs> chat out loud. Uh, <laughs> then another good uh, driver, I think, often is just content. Oh no! Yeah. Just the content. Of course. And yeah. just and that's the thing yeah. with Discovery Weekly too. It's yeah, not about it's the design. Content. It's what what's in there. Yeah. And it's I very little content. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. We forget uh, that that's, I think, often the case. Uh, I saw some really interesting A-B tests that Netflix ran okay. with, like, either we used, they used this really pretty full screen, <laughs> like, takeover, beautiful image. And as visual designers, I think we tend to think yeah. uh, that's it the most have good a huge thing. Yeah, yeah, of course it should have a huge impact. And then it turns out just showing ugly or uglier uh, and lists of content is mm -hmm. more impactful well, because it's more content and content is what we're there for. <laughs> so we, I think we tend to um, neglect mm -hmm. the importance of one, just how much content is on screen and okay. then the quality of that content. And often um, just uh, taking the time to produce better recommendations is mm -hmm. maybe a bigger driver than the visual treatment yeah. of that. That the experience, like yes. showing the covers in 3D. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Or a graph of what your friends like. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Uh, mm. Voting feature. Okay, content I'm just is king. This yes, Peter. Exactly. Con yeah. is content king. is king. Or queen. That's that's good. Or queen. Yeah. Yeah. So um, and that's something that we're working with at, at Minecraft now too. So so okay. we're doing some exciting things. Sadly, I can't show anything right now. Um, but that, that's also a new driver for what's coming in Minecraft. Yeah. We are um, we're working on so we had some friction within the community when oh. we we sort of merged our platforms onto one like the oh yeah technically, we remember yeah. yeah so we have this, we have two versions on console actually and and some are just such dedicated fans they're also used to doing things in a certain way mm. and then they want to use the old version of, rather than the new version mm. so we're looking at listening very very carefully 
to all of that feedback and, and friction and then fixing that. But it's going to take a lot of time because okay. there's a lot of listening. Okay. And we don't want to do the same mistake again. So we're doing a lot of the UI. But a big part of that is also, I mean, the, I think the beautiful thing with Minecraft is, is the cre creativity of the community and like how much stuff oh, yeah. is being produced. It's insane. Oh, okay. And even with all the amazing things that people are creating. And so um, then again, content is king, yeah. I think, right? So we wanted to make it easier to reach your own stuff and reach your um, the community stuff and, and just enjoy that. And I think that, that could be a different focus than someone else would have, which mm. could be like, oh, we need to make it prettier. Yeah. Like we're trying to do that too. Improve the Don't 3D get me engine. Wrong. You know, yeah. yeah. And we, we're working a lot on performance and, and the visuals, but uh, we're trying to really just think about the content. Cool. So yeah, you can deny that Spotify list has a nice design. Yeah. So very helpful from yeah. Hamza. Okay. Hi, Yap. Thanks for the feedback. And uh, oh, okay. And people are working in XD right now, watching us on Adobe Live. Oh, good. That's awesome. Beautiful. That's a good experience. Okay, so do we have time for, yeah, we have about like 12 minutes. Okay. If we want to, I'm interested in um, uh, educational uh, creativity, actually, mm. because I think it will speak to all designers. Yeah. Too. Yeah, so. I think that, yeah, that's it's a good um, context to talk about that, um, because we, I think we all agree that it's so important. Mm -hmm. But we have this, I think, international <laughs> crisis, <laughs> honestly. So <laughs> I want to, like, make... Um, uh, not make a statement, but okay. Let me sh get up a graph here yeah, on the screen. Uh, oh yeah, okay. Here it is. Okay. So what is this? Uh, what is this? Whoa. These are for you for those who have seen this before the PISA scores for the top countries 2016. So we see Singapore in the top. This basically uh, tries to measure the uh, quality of education. Oh. In different countries. Okay. So they do huge tests, standardized tests. They're the same. And they're being done in, in uh, all these countries and more. Um, and they test different things. And then we produce a score. And then at least within Sweden, we see how like our debate about education is based on, uh, to a big degree, these tests. So okay. if you go up, everyone's like, hallelujah, we went yeah. up. We're doing something good. Um, and we see Singapore up here and, and China up here and, um, yeah, and Japan and yeah. Japan. Finland used to be in the top, but they went down. And I think that's interesting because yeah, Canada is very high. Wow. Canada is very high. Uh, what is interesting, though, here, if, if we are critical, like anyone can look at a graph and say, look at the number one spot. That's that's number one. Like I can I can read this graph. But if you look at what they are measuring, for example, mm -hmm. the concept of creativity is pretty much non-existent in how they oh, measure, right? Yeah. So, so we have to be really careful. When we talk about what is a good educational system, how do we... How yeah, do what we, is the output? Yeah, <laughs> and how, what <laughs> KPIs do we have? Yeah. Like, what are our success metrics? And I think for many of us, especially within the creative industry, we want people to be more creative, like loosen up. Don't be... Uh, don't trust the authority constantly, like mm -hmm. question things. I think that's really in yeah, like break the core the of creativity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, break some rules. Like, be a rebel. And this is basically the opposite of be a rebel, which creativity cannot be measured. Oh. And that I can assure you. Then Christina. I disagree, uh -huh. uh, but I think it can measure certain point. But, but it's a good point, yeah, because it can point. be really difficult to measure like untangible concepts like creativity. So then what happens when we only start driving our education systems with things that we can measure. Hmm. Read a, like how, how good you are at math, how good you are at reading. Those things are really easy to measure and therefore they are included in this test. Okay. And since creativity at least is difficult to measure, it's, that could be a reason. Angrier about this. And um, so this is actually a quote from within O OECD, oh, the organization yeah. creating this test. Mm -hmm. this is pre, uh, and she says, the test is very poor when it comes to measuring social emotional skills. That's also important in our industry, yes. right? Uh, intercultural sensitivity, ethical thinking, creativity, and entrepreneurship. All skills that are essential now and will be more so later. So I think this is like, how do we make a difference mm -hmm. if, if we're talking about creativity in schools? And I think we need to uh, 
um, teach creativity to a larger extent yeah. and values that are aligned with it. But then we also need to question the system. And the system right now is relying on these measurable metrics that we, that we just talked about. And, uh, and you are a teacher, right? I am a teacher, yeah. yes. So uh, w you were teaching code or what was your... I'm teaching, yes, I'm teaching at Hyper Island. It's a great school and it's in Karlskrona and Stockholm in Sweden and um, a bunch of other places. And I'm teaching both programming, design, okay. oh. uh, critical thinking, and rhetorics. Oh, so we, we're doing... We, to the we same just, class? See what I mean? No. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. Sometimes though, that yes. That would be fun. They, yeah. they are, so there's one program that actually, they study a lot of all of these subjects mm -hmm. and they are very interdisciplinary. And I think that's also something that we should appreciate more, like knowing a lot of things. I think we're told at a young age to like be great at something. You have to find your thing. I think we, we can afford to be good at a lot of things. Cool. And uh, it's not that hard. Uh, if, if we try real hard and believe that it's not that hard, then it doesn't become that hard. So yeah, some, some learn all of these things, programming, design, presentation technique, critical thinking, data science, in a two-year course. And, um, oh. and we just finished um, uh, a course on critical thinking and re rhetorics uh, combined. <laughs> and uh, one of the most, uh, I think, best results that we got from that was um, they, they had an assignment where I think it's a, a big issue when we're talking about design is how we, um, you know, compare qualitative research with quantitative research. Okay. As in, we we do we make a design and then we try to extract insights from like mm -hmm. user interviews, yeah. and then we believe that they can say that something is good or bad. Mm. They are a judgment of the truth, basically, mm -hmm. and I think that's the right way to look at qualitative research. It's okay. always about pinpointing like a problem that a user has, but it's never proof of the quality of the experience. Yeah. The sample is just too small, yeah. right? So you can create hypothesis from, from qualitative experience, uh, user research, and then you can try to validate those yeah, on a with quantitative. The bigger scale. Yeah. Um, but so we, we try to tap into that for sort of debate and, s and uh, skew metrics as much as we could in a qualitative session. Mm. So they created one survey a couple of students that they sent to uh, a different set of schools, okay. and they were identical to the surveys. So you could you could see this happening oh. in, in a qualitative yeah. session. The the questions are the same. Actually, though, the questions in the beginning and the end were the same, and then they just have some different questions some in the meaning in in the middle, and that just gave them some information implicitly, and they started thinking in different ways because of how the Christians oh. were framed, which means that the end result, the only then, they only measured then the, the Christians that were identical. They, got, they measured how positive people were to military investments in Sweden. 80% in one uh, survey was against. In the other one, 80% was wow. pro. And they only Just changed the, only changed the, the questions. experience was different with the questions in the middle. Exactly. Oh. So they they compared identical questions, and the only difference in those surveys were the questions in the middle. And Tiziano is interesting in knowing how you teach critical thinking. Yes. So this is an example of how we teach critical thinking. We mm. we try to uh, work with the concept like how do we measure things, mm. and then uh, see how um, difficult it is to pinpoint truth, or okay. like do a good survey yeah. by skewing as much as we can the survey and seeing what, what kind of effects can we create just by changing the questions. And in this case, then like 80 versus 80. It's like completely. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's extreme. Yeah. 80, 80 on one side yeah. and 90 on the other it's, side. It's, it's pretty intense, it's very intense, especially only with, with changing questions. Yeah. Uh, and how do you teach creativity? creativity up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think a lot of it, uh, especially at Hyper, is uh, we strive to not tell someone how to do something, okay. but we just give them a goal and then we let Some them run towards that goal. Um, yeah. yeah, and yeah, I it's think more about uh, empowering creativity. I guess yeah. it's not something that you teach. So uh no, I think yeah, it's it's difficult to pinpoint creativity as a subject and then mm. teach it, there's so many parts to it. One yeah. is stop believing that some authority has the right answer, mm. so question everything, and then do that um, practically several times over. Yeah. And at, at Hyper, we do that um, specifically by also as soon as someone asks us something, or most people, most teachers at Hyper do this, or, or uh, managers, they just answer, what do you think? 
Oh. Not maybe with so, that yeah, in intonation. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you think? what do you think? But as in, you probably have an answer. And so, so trust that uh, and try it and see what happens. Yeah, that's the feedback also. Like, is it okay. pitch it or enhance it? Yeah, that's good. Is priming also part on how you teach critical thinking? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and and this, I think, this tip specific example is could be looked as priming, as they are okay, yeah. priming with the questions and how they're formalized, and then t to try to achieve a certain mindset. Um, yeah. Thank you, Matthias. Awesome. So we have about uh, yeah, like two minutes together. Two minutes together. Uh, how can they follow you? And uh, also, I invite you to uh, search for. Uh, Uh, to be on YouTube because uh, some talks are oh, recorded. Yeah. I have a yeah. I recommend if you're interested, in especially in critical thinking, yeah. uh, applied to the how we design specifically. And yeah. so I have a talk uh, from Nordic dot design. Yeah, that's the one I last watched. year. It's, it's very good. In October, I yeah. think. Yeah, uh, and, and it uh, talks about sort of how we st um, strove away from skeuomorphism to yeah. this like clean mindset. Yeah. And we tend to assume that clean and, and minimalistic is good. It's, it's good, yeah. Like as as a adjective, it just means good. It's an awesome uh, talks because you show that everything can be good. Like, and you give examples of uh, like civilization or like, yeah. and you say, yeah. yeah, but look, like this is the opposite. It's complex. Uh, it's using a skeuomorphism, but then it works. You know, and that's what users expect. And uh, you talk also about the the importance of emotion. Also yes. In the, I, yeah. So I think that's something process. that we lost. So um, the 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 talk is just there to try to nuance this question of like how good min good minimalism is. I I still think it's good. I'm a designer, but <laughs> yeah, it's like I think something that we lost in that transition was our trust in emotion and like fun. How fun something can be, is like no, it should be minimalistic and like very square and, clean, and yeah. German. Swiss, Swiss, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So I really invite you to watch this talk on YouTube. They are all amazing. And uh, thanks for the great questions. Yes, the questions about the questions, uh, everyone. creative thinking and uh, how to teach creativity. Like it was awesome. And uh, we will still be live from awards. Uh, you will be on stage uh, tomorrow. Yes, right? tomorrow I'm on stage. Uh, I don't know if the talks are recorded here, but maybe I don't know. But there's a follow-up interview straight afterwards. Ah, okay. So yes. there will be video content so also on the West awards stream. website yep. that you can visit. Uh, in our case, we will be back uh, live on behance.net slash live in about five minutes, I think with uh, Jenny Engo. So she's a uh, UX designer from San Francisco. So mm, it's funny that yeah, I meet her very good. Yeah. here. I just saw her talk. And, um, and she, she used to work for Airbnb, so on a big scale project. Airbnb, which is next to Adobe, like mm. we are neighbors in yep. San Francisco. Yep. Just uh, the next block. So it should be cool. And she will be back with uh, Rufus. And uh, yeah, so thanks again, Toby. Thank you. It was uh, yeah, uh, really fascinating, and uh, and I hope it yeah, I'm sure it inspired our cre our community, and now they they will follow you, follow your talks. <laughs> yeah, Maybe please reach will, uh, out. Please reach out. I'm sure Twitter you are is the best. Awesome teacher. Medium. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks again. Cool. Thank and, you. And uh, yeah, see you. We'll be back in about five minutes on behance.net. Slash live. Bye everyone.